we've got a four inch ducting laid out. We've just double checked and it's dug out to a depth of 600 mil, which is deep enough. And now we're just gonna get a, a draw wire in. And we're gonna start pulling the armor cable in. Right, so we've dug a five inch hole so this can come in here and then we're just gonna leave a little bit of length on this and pin it to the wall. Uh, just rather than leaving it flush with the floor. Um, so we've got the armored cable coming in now. And then we've got a Cat6 cable which we run in with it, which is bringing an internet supply into here, which is going to have. Is it in here? Nice yeah, one. We've got a little uh, hub, basically, it's going to have this Ethernet connected into it. That goes on the wall. That pairs uh, with the uh, charger, which is just through an RF uh, signal. So this has the internet connection in it, that is just a wireless signal to the uh, charger. Uh, so we're going to run another Cat6 cable in with this one, which is going to go all the way to the front of the house, which is going to be connected to a clip or a clamp meter, or an ammeter, which is measuring the amount of current coming into their house, uh, or has been used by the house. So if they're using lots of high current using equipment at the time, then this 7 kilowatt charger goes on, it can actually reduce the amount of kilowatt the output of the charger because it knows that a lot, a lot of load is being pulled from the house. So it's a way of managing the load that's being used in the house, managing the grid basically, and uh, the company being able to have control and see what is being used on an estate, for example. They can see that this whole estate is using so many kilowatts at this time, so they can actually reduce the current uh, load of the uh, charger as well, manually, if you want to do that. So this is where it's all hauled in and that swoops in there so it's kept, we've kept it as low as we can we've kept it right down to the, the 600 depth as, as long as we can and then that comes up and just goes straight into the garage and then these flags will go straight over there and it come up, comes up through the ground so it's a better way of doing it and looks a lot neater there's no cables coming out of the ground being clipped up and being drilled through the wall it's a lot better protected under the ground there. But it's got that secondary protection as well in the ducting. And if we want to add any more cables or anything in future, it's already there under the ground. It doesn't have to be dug up again. So really, on an, an estate like this, this is what should be done from the start. And then people, then we don't have to do all this. Um, the original cable as well, that was supplied to the garage, which in most, in most cases is a, a small cable so a 2.5 cable was supplied to this garage from the house there it is so that's what the typical job that standard job that most people would do it comes out the ground and it, it goes into the into the garage and you've got that little bit of cable exposed there it's not very neat yeah, much better to do it this the way we've done it so that supplies the garage consume unit at the minute, which is supplied from the, the house consume unit on a 2.5 cable. <clears throat> so there's the supply, current supply at the minute. Comes out in the twin and earth into the conduit box, connects onto the armoured cable and then goes under the ground. Um, so that's the old supply. And if we want to do anything with the garage, so that cable's rated at roughly 25 amps, that 2.5 cable. And we've got, uh, you know, potentially 32, 40 amps of current being used in the garage. So instead of running another armored cable out to the garage with that, that's just doing the charger, we've just replaced that cable entirely with a 16 mil three core. We're gonna put an 80 amp fuse on that at the fuse in the fuse carrier at the, uh, the main incoming supply. And that has got the ability to carry that load, do the charger, do all the power in there, and then anything else that they might like to do in future as well. So instead of, yeah, running the separate circuit alongside it, just get rid of it, replace it with a bigger one. It's the best, most efficient way of doing it. <coughs> Here's the hub. So that's got a power lead and an ethernet connection on it. So that's gonna sit in the garage and we'll fix that to the wall. 
our ethernet cable will go into that we'll plug the power supply in this has then got the internet connection then this wirelessly connects to the the zappy unit car charger there's a little ammeter that was talking about so we clamp that around the main tail or the main live incoming supply from the electric meter we're going to run another cat six. this is obviously not long enough to get all the way down the garden into the house so we're going to run a cat six in joint our cat six onto the end of that which you can do up to 100 meters of a uh, run with this so yeah that's at the incoming supply uh, on the house which measuring the current being used by by the house which gives them the ability to manage to see it and manage it that's for managing this is for seeing what current's being used <coughs> so we're just going to lay all this tape tape down now this is the tile tape you've seen in our other videos it's got thick uh, plastic which is quite hard to penetrate you have to hit it quite a few times with a shovel to penetrate this then it's got the ducting then it's got the armoured which is buried at 600 deep as well so this cable is well well protected Level 42. That's how you do it. <laughs> so the charge is fed from a 32 amp B type MCB. A couple of things. Obviously, we can use an MCB because we've used this tough cable. It's all on display, it's all visible. So we don't need any sort of RCD protection. It's a buried cable. And then this unit has actually got an appropriate RCD built into it. It can also detect if uh, there's a loss of the earth to the unit. So it uh, will cease charging to protect the end user so it's got yeah protective devices built into it right so here's the my energy hub the setup of that is fairly straightforward just needs power and it needs a data connection back to the router that's in the house so obviously your LED on the left there indicates you've got power um, the server light indicates um, that it's got a you know data connection and when you first power the hub up it just goes through um, a setup process which you know you don't have to do anything for that it just uh, automatically connects to the server there are other modules available um, I believe well one of those I can't remember which off the top of my head is a remote NG sensor as it happens we've got um, a hardwired um, little ammeter connected around the main tail to the building which helps the zappy sort of monitor energy usage and allow it to work in eco mode um, the other light that you can see there indicates that it's paired to the zappy charger so let's just have a quick look at that but you can see the literally during the setup process the only button that i've had to press is the pair button which allows the hub to pair with the charger So we've um, juiced up the charger. Um, there's quite a lot of information um, that it uh, shows. Obviously, you've got the date and the time. You've got the charging mode. Um, if you have any micro generation, solar PV, anything like that, that is contributing um, to the energy usage of your house, you would see arrows making their way towards this little house icon here as it is. There's, there's no micro generation at this property you see it's pulling energy from the grid so it's quite cool to be able to see you can see there's the current usage of the property here in kilowatts in the top right um, it's quite cool to see what the house is using anyway um, this little icon here is I believe the percentage of green energy used to charge the car last time which obviously that's zero because there is no micro generation going on. Um, this tells you 
um, kilowatt hours, 1.1 kilowatt hours. That's what the car took at the last charge. This is the charging mode. Obviously at the moment it's disconnected. The menu system is really quite easy to navigate. There's your menu button, up and down, and then forwards. Um, you can see here that uh, we have paired the hub. What we can do is go to the advanced settings. Link devices, and then we can put it in pairing mode. And at that stage, and press the button on the hub and it would pair the hub. Now what the hub allows for is certain controls to be accessed from an app. So for example, the charging mode, it allows you to set schedules. So we're on fast charge mode here. Um, the eco modes, I believe, will um, essentially adjust the rate of charging if there's surplus en energy being generated that's not been used by the home it will use that to charge the vehicle um, but in this instance obviously because there's no uh, solar or wind or anything like that um, we're just pulling energy from the grid therefore I don't think the eco modes would have uh, any effect in this instance.